Thank you for tuning into my channel. We're working on our beginner sampler quilt today, and so if you want to see how to make a keyboard block like this, please stay tuned. We're going to continue with our beginner um, sampler quilt series today, and I have the three blocks that we've made so far. This quilt is going to be nine blocks total, and so we're one third of the way done to having a completed quilt top. So far we've done the four patch block, we've done the nine patch cross block, and last time we did the checker square block. Today our uh, block is going to be a little bit different um, because it doesn't have any squares in it. I actually was able to let Cameron pick a block and so I'll show you what he chose. We are going to go with, um, it's on page, oh, wait, wait, wait. before we go through <laughs> which uh, block it is, we're still in the block a day book by Lucinda Ganderton to get some inspiration. I am changing the size of the finished block and so my measurements will not be what's in the book. We're just using this for some inspiration. So today, um, like I said, we did the, the checker square block last time. Today we're gonna look at the block above that one. It's called, they call it the keyboard block. And if you look closely, it's just a series of rectangles that are sewn together. Um, in the book, they are using uh, purples as the color uh, parts of the block, but I'm gonna take a slightly different approach. We'll go upstairs right now and go over the fabrics. So I have my fabric selections here uh, for the keyboard block. As I said, the um, in the book, they use purples. And this book is interesting because it's color coded by the, um, the colors that they use in the blocks. But I'm going to take a slightly different approach. I'm going to do a rainbow kind of color palette for mine. And so I went ahead and laid out my fabrics in order from red down to purple. And then I added this one just cause it's fun. And um, this last one has all the colors in it, which I think will be nice. For my background rectangles, I'm going to keep using my same background. Hopefully, um, I can use it for every single block. I still have quite a large piece behind me, so hopefully it should work. Um, for, let me go back to the picture for a second. Um, the ratio of color rectangle to background rectangle in these blocks is about two, um, two thirds color and then one third um, of the background and again as I said before in the book they're finishing at 12 and 12 and a half inches or they'll be 12 inches finished but we're making a 12 and a half inch block but my blocks are bigger so I'm working to get a 16 and a half inch unfinished block and it'll be 16 inches when it's finished so for my ratio I decided to um, use I'm going to cut 11 inch color strips by two and a half inches and for my background I'm going to cut six inches by two and a half inches. So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting my fabric now and then um, and then we'll get ready to lay this block out. When I was choosing my scraps I just wanted to make sure that I could get uh, whatever measurement that I wanted out of um, out of the pieces. These are really small background pieces, but I am going to get, um, I am going to go ahead and get six by two and a half. Even out of this little bitty one here, I'm going to use my shape cut and see what I can get out of it. So I'm lining up with the, um, the bottom line with the zero on here. And you can see it's already six inches. I may have to cut a little bit off of it to make it square, but I think I am gonna be able to get six inches by two and a half. For this one, I'm cutting the two and a half first, and then I'll get, I'll turn it and get the six. With this one, there is not gonna be a, um, a lot of scrap. Actually, I don't have to cut that one at all. Okay, so this is the size that I'm looking for for my, um, my background blocks, and I'm gonna go, go ahead and, and choose one of these to cut the, um, actually I'll choose this one 
because it's with the fabric, just so you can see me do that. Um, this is a rather large piece, so I'm going to cut a two and a half inch strip off of it. And then I'll get my one 11 inch um, strip from that, or my rectangle from that. So I'm cutting the, um, let me stand up because I get better cuts when I stand. I'm going to cut the, um, I'm going to square up on one side. The shape cut ruler is really simple for this, so I like using it. And then I'm going over two and a half inches. And getting a nice strip okay um, this for the keyboard block it's actually eight uh, fabrics that I need and I thought about maybe um, maybe adding eight different backgrounds but I decided not to I think for now uh, hopefully I won't have to add any other backgrounds but I think just using the one background is gonna be best for me but I did try to choose a wide variety of um, color prints to use. Okay, so this is my one 11 by five or 11 by two and a half inch strip, and they're going to go together like this. Okay, um, so I'm going to finish cutting all of the strips um, or all of the rectangles that I need, and then I'll show you. Um, We'll put the uh, block together. So I have all the pieces here laid out. I have my eight um, color strips and then my eight background strips. Again, these color strips are 11 inches by two and a half. Um, and then these background strips are six inches by two and a half. I want to show you that I did have one piece that has a seam on it. Um, and if that is, if that matters to you, if you don't want to have a piece that has a seam, um, then just choose a, a fabric that has, that does not have one. This was just what I wanted and I wanted some purple and I pulled it out and it was long enough. It just had that seam in it. It's not going to matter. Once the, the piece is sewn together, you won't realize it unless you're looking super close. Now, what I'm going to do now, they're not actually in the keyboard order yet. They are just, uh, dark and light and I'm going to stitch all of the background rectangles to my color rectangles. Still using a quarter inch seam um, and I've used a, um, a leader to start so that the uh, machine doesn't eat any of my fabric. All right and so I'm just stitching down on each piece. I'm putting the light onto the dark um, right sides together and stitching that quarter inch seam. One thing about this particular block is it won't, I don't think it'll take very long to make because, and it's really simple seaming, even though it's um, all rectangles. Okay, so it's really, I like it a lot. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And the only, my only concern is, um, one is the accuracy of the cutting. You want to make sure that your cutting is accurate and that you use the same, um, I would be sure to use the same ruler to cut everything so I wouldn't use like a shape cut and then use a regular ruler um, the next with the next pieces so that you have a better chance of them being accurate and um, for my pressing make sure you can see this camera can you see what okay I'm gonna do all my finger pressing to the dark here and then I'm just gonna move it over to the other side. All right, and then I'm gonna keep stitching all the way down. I think I'm gonna do that next. I won't show it all on the camera this time. Um, I'll do this and then I'll come back and show you the next step. pieces stitched together now um, the only thing to make the alternating border is just to flip some of the um, the rows around so I'm going to start with the first row 
and I'm going to turn it. Okay, and then I'm going to turn the third row, the fifth row, and the seventh row. Okay, and now I'm just going to start stitching these rows together um, for the sake of chain piecing. I'm going to stitch two, 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 and two, and then four and four, and then do the last seam in the middle, and um, and then the block will be complete. At this point, because they're so long, if you're not comfortable, you can um, pin these. I am not going to pin them. I'm just going to hold the um, I'm going to hold the ends and hope that it works. Um, it works the way I want it to. Um, one cool thing about this block is that you don't have to worry about uh, seams lining up, so that makes it easier to stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the second row, flipping it onto the first row, lining up the ends and sewing, and I'm going to chain piece this whole thing um, together. I did, again, start with a leader because I'm not, um, I'm, I just want everything to, to stay above the, uh, the bed of the machine. I don't want anything to get eaten. Okay. And then when I get to about the halfway point, I'm going to line up the end and just kind of hold it to make sure that things line up. Um, the main thing with this block, I think, is making sure that your quarter inch is consistent. I'm just kind of hoping that mine works out. Usually I do okay. And then the other thing is you want to make sure that your, um, the seams, that they at least go in the direction you want them to. I don't think that you want your seam allowances to go behind your background. You want them to, um, to stay behind your darker fabric so that they don't show through. So I have two sewn together. I'm going to get the other one sewn and then um, and then we'll see this thing put together. I think that I'll just um, speed up the video from this point forward so that you can see how I sew them all, uh, but it doesn't have to be, you know, I don't have to show every single little step. So I'm going to speed up the video here so that you can see how I chain piece all of this together. again so I'll do that and then uh, we'll put this block with the other blocks so here's the finished keyboard block I am pretty pleased with the way it turned out it is quite a different look from um, these blocks so if you're like a, a super beginner you might not want to do this one yet you might want to save it till the end but I'm going to go ahead and put it up here with the other blocks um, I was concerned that the background is too busy, but I think it's going to be okay once we put everything together in the quilt. Uh, the only thing that I did notice is that these don't really line up like they should, but that's not worth stressing about. Um, 
but I'm really happy with it. It looks cute and I love the effect of the rainbow as well. Um, I think it's going to be nice once we put everything together. I hope that you will keep uh, quilting with us on the quilt along. If you have any questions about what you've seen in the video, leave them in the comments below. If you have a favorite block so far, leave that in the comments as well. I'd love to know what you think about our new keyboard block and our other blocks that we have chosen. Thumbs up this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!